For somebody that's teetotal, I spend an awful lot of time down the pub, usually just after filming a review, and that means I spend a lot of time having pub debates. And there are quite a few different car-related pub debates that I think are very much worth talking about. This week, we're going to be discussing what you could get instead of a Porsche Boxster for the same money, which is just a little bit different and perhaps a little bit better. We're beginning with this Mercedes SLK 55, the R172 generation if you're a fan of chassis codes. It is actually raining. Five minutes ago it was gloriously sunny, but I'm going to try and fight through if for no other reason than one of the things this car can't do is put its roof up while it's moving. So we're going to see if I can continue and do the review without getting soaked. This is also a good opportunity to try out Mercedes Air Scarf functionality. I've only actually driven one other car with Air Scarf, which was the SLS, and I've got to say, was rather disappointing in that car. This is a 2009 car, and you could pick one of these up for about the same price as a half-decent 987 Boxster, so 25 grand, let's say. Now, I am quite sure that if you were at a pub, the Porsche bore in the corner would be very quick to tell you that a Boxster will run rings around this. However, the owner of the AMG would probably also be just as quick to tell you that he didn't care. Because you see, this car has a trick up its sleeve, or more accurately, a trick down its trousers. You see, this car is packing a five and a half litre naturally aspirated V8 made exclusively for this model and this model alone. It's derived from the twin turbo 5.5 litre V8 you found in things like the E-Class of the time. And it makes 420 horsepower and about 400 pound-foot of torque. That means this thing is a little bit different to your average Boxster. Compared with its bigger brother, the SL, this is actually a practical flyweight at about 1,600-odd kilos. Next to the Boxster, of course, it's still a bit of a porker. But how does it then go down a road? Let's find out. Straight line pace, certainly not an issue. The thing, unsurprisingly, has plenty of shove from low down. It's also a relatively comfortable thing, although it is a touch jittery. You can feel a fair bit of scuttle shake in it, and a road like this, it quite clearly does not like. I'm sorry, the camera's being shaken around quite a bit, but um, <clears throat> such is the risk of such a car. I can tell all of my cameras are being shaken around a lot, and that is a sign of a car which isn't the most rigid. This particular car is actually not Graham's, it's the wife's. And she too is a petrol head, having previously had a C63, and before that, an RX-8. So, thanks to you. I don't know your name, but cool choice of car. Very happy to see it's also in a different colour combination from silver and black. This is black and red, and it suits it down to a T. It's also a, a tiny thing, I mean, really quite compact. It looks shrunken, it really does, and they have shoehorned that V8 into the front. It's mated to a seven-speed Mercedes gearbox, which they call Speed Shift Plus 7G Tronic. I did some research to try and find out what exactly makes it a plus, and I didn't come up with very much. As far as I can tell, it just locks up the torque converter a little bit earlier than some of the other transmissions they do, but it's not to be confused with the MCT transmission you'll find in the later C63. This car has cylinder deactivation, and apparently that does not play well with the MCT. What that does mean, though, is that on a run, you can get approaching 30 miles to the gallon, which means as a tourer, this is actually a very fine thing indeed. When I asked Graham how much they paid for this car and he told me, I was positively shocked. If he'd said to me about £40,000, I would have completely believed him. But in truth, they paid just over half of that. And this really does feel like a hell of a lot of car. It's not as luxurious as the SL, of, of course, but it is notably better than the old SLK55. That felt like you were sitting inside a rather cheap and nasty American-made dustbin. This, they actually seem to have put a little bit of effort into, and it feels more Mercedes. Sure, there's not quite as much leather as I would typically like, but it's fine. It's not a place you sit in and go, ugh, this isn't good enough. It's a quality product. There is a valve in that exhaust, apparently. 
Shall we see if we can find it? The engine will rev to just about 7,000 RPM. Although it's not exactly blistering in its top end performance, it certainly can still move. The gearbox, like most Merc units of the time, is just not stellar. It's okay, and it will change more or less when you tell it to, but it's not in a particular hurry. Now, it's still a fairly jittery thing, this car, it must be said, but it's not unpleasant. In fact, I've only got my new Claudio Lugli shirt on today, and the roof is down, I haven't even really got the heating up that high, and I'm nice and warm. The wind in the cabin is actually very well controlled. You've got a great view of the bonnet up front, which makes you feel like you're in something really properly special. As a car to buy and run about for the summer, this thing would be, be pretty damn good. Now we're approaching the more twisty section. Let's see what it's like. Steering's actually quite nice, pretty direct. Weights up. The suspension is never happy though. It feels like it's perhaps a touch too stiff for the chassis. Really, I think I would rather this car carried another 30 kilos, but was quite a bit stiffer. That being said, it'll get round a bend better than I gave it credit for. <laughs> Front end will wash just a little bit wide, then the rear will try and come round on you, but it's not scary, it's not daunting. Traction control doesn't really seem that invasive. There are a number of different modes for this car. You've got comfort, sport, manual, standard Merc fare of the time. I've got it in manual because I want to have fun. And fun, I am having. Camera's not though. <laughs> That's really getting shaken around. So a couple of the options that this car has, which are rather nice, the little IWC clock up here, which is very classy, bit sports chrono pack if you're a Porsche fan, but I really like that. And this has the magic sky roof. So when you've got the lid on, it has a little switch up here and at the push of a button, you can either darken or lighten the roof. That's really quite swish. And the sort of thing that you would normally only expect really in a, a very high end car. I don't know how much that was as an option, but I can't imagine it was that cheap. It's the sort of thing I think you'd show off to people rather than use yourself. Incidentally, if you do want to put the roof up or down, you'll find the controls very cleverly hidden under a little flap here. Sort of Lamborghini type touch. I'm also very, very happy with the fact this has got a proper gear lever in it that moves. None of this sort of silly, twiddly little thing that just returns to where it is like you used to have on the old A-Class, stuff like that. I hate those, they're dangerous. Dials here, nice and simple, very much again, classic Merc of the time, they tell me everything that I need. Although the, the temperature gauge is, is a lot higher than I thought it would be, because it's it's sort of, it's there. You'd think it'd be there, but it's, it's there. I, that's kind of worrying. It's probably not worrying at all. It's probably fine, but still. <laughs> she can get a wriggle on this thing. Absolutely brilliant that they would go and make a whole engine for one car. It's a lot more poke than the last one too. 360 brake in that, 420 in this. That's a big power uplift. I really do love the Boxster. Not so much the current one, but more or less everything up to the 981. I was a real big fan of, and, and even actually the first 718s I, I did have a bit of a thing for, as perverse as it was. And sure, Dynamically, they are definitely the superior to this car in terms of body control, steering response, all that jazz. The Boxster is, is the superior sports car. But I don't feel like I'm really being held back by this thing at all. And that engine really is worth a compromise in terms of the chassis. This is a car with a lot of personality. I can see how it fill the roles very easily of both sort of nice continent cruiser and also bit of fun at the weekend. It's a mistress and the wife. Or, as this is the 21st century, it's also your life partner and your non-binary, gender-neutral squeeze of the weekend. This is an inclusive channel. Everyone is welcome to love cars. That, <laughs> there's a little bump in the road there and this really doesn't like it. It's a lot of fun though. 
and it's it's raining. It's it's, it's raining quite a lot. Okay, so ah uh, yeah, I, I'm not getting wet yet. Let's get the roof up. Oh yeah, and the, oh the cameras are oh, the the cameras lost its focus too. Oh everything's falling apart. Oh it's a disaster. Oh no. I don't know what's going on here. Absolutely no idea. So, on occasion, oh, that's interesting. The the camera has completely lost focus. Right. All right, you're back. Sorry about that. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's get the magic sky going, shall we? Oh, that's dark and it. Ooh. Yeah, that's quite cool. All right, we're good. Well, this I suppose gives me an opportunity to test what the car is like. Roof up. It still shakes. <laughs> Even at 35 mile an hour, it still shakes. It's not a rigid car at all. This is clearly designed for more smooth, flowing roads. It is, constant shake aside, very comfortable. It's quite refined with the roof up. Not really much wind noise. There's one or two rattles in here, but they're not particularly distracting. Visibility is actually very good. In fact, for, for a convertible with the roof up, visibility is excellent. And oh look, now the sun is out again, but it's still raining. <laughs> what a day. Okay, let's put this in comfort mode, see what she's like. This enables the cylinder deactivation. There are no adaptive dampers on this, so the ride quality is the same jittery sort of weirdness that it was before. It of course changes the gearbox parameters, and I think it's also lightened the steering too. So it does make a pronounced difference. Makes it, I suppose, a little bit more like what you'd expect a Mercedes to be, and if I was just pottering about, this is probably the mode that I would use. All your infotainment, controls, and everything here are pretty much the same as you'd get from any 10-year-old Merc. That is to say, they're, they're, they're okay. The buttons themselves are all quite nice. The action's really pleasant, very nice, feels good quality, but the screen is now feeling its age. Would a Boxster be any different? Doubt it. As I've just done, a big rant about car dealers too, I should give special mention to the people who supplied this, which is Parkway Specialist Cars. I've actually looked at their stock a number of times. I, I did recognise the name when, when Graham told it to me, and he says they were absolutely excellent, because he bought the car remotely, with it you know, being COVID and everything, and the car came down, was exactly as described. They were very easy, no pressure, had plenty of time to look over the car before he took it, and, and they were really, really good to deal with. So I'm very happy to say that he had an excellent experience with that dealer, and the car has also been faultless in the time that he's had it. Now, that hasn't actually been that long, so I can't really say whether it's been particularly reliable for him or not, because it just hasn't been around for that time. Turning circle's actually pretty good in it as well. It's easy to place on the road, helps that it's so compact. This is a really very enjoyable car to drive. Of the cars that I'm going to be driving this week, I do believe this is probably going to be the cheapest. And it feels like an excellent, not Boxster rival, but Boxster alternative, because it is a genuinely different experience. That air scarf at long last is actually doing something, although what it's doing is useless because we've got the roof up now. Where were you 10 minutes ago? This weather. Look at this. This is what I've been working with all week. I'm going to say a big thank you to Graham as well because he changed the day we were going to review at the last minute notice because tomorrow was supposed to be absolutely hideous. So he's been a superstar to come out today. And I think this is a gorgeous looking car. Does not look its age at all. Storage space is somewhat compromised, especially when you've got the roof down because, of course, that's where it lives. So you, you lose a bit of your boot. Brakes are pretty decent. Pedal feel is good. Easy to modulate. It is a shame that the car is so uncomposed and, and jittery. That really isn't a very murk feeling thing. That, that, that's unfortunate. If you can get around that though, this is really a, a very nice package. And this is the sort of car that I could easily see somebody buying as just a, a bit of a summer runabout. You know, they, they grab it in March, sell it in October. And I think it'd be the sort of thing you probably find yourself regretting selling fairly quickly. I actually kind of enjoy it. Very flawed, but certainly very enjoyable. Ha, huh. yeah, go away, son. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, 
and we'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.